Matt Solver with Dr. Ways In, and do I have a treat for you? Because I have with me today Daniel Kraft, who is a physician, and he is the chair of medicine for Singularity University. And I first met Daniel because he put on something called Future Med uh, back in the distant past. It's now called Exponential Med. And without a doubt, Daniel, I know I've told you this many times, but that was the most fun week I ever had in healthcare. So what I've asked Daniel to do is, he, he really is the guru of digital toys. I guess that's a good way to put it, in healthcare. And uh, he always has something in his pocket. So Daniel, what's new, what's great, what, would you, what should we know about? Well, I don't know if I'm about it, the guru of digital toys, where I hope these digital tools and technologies are- I'm sorry, about. tools. Well, tools have, have moved from sort of the kind of the, the early you know, step counters and kind of fun gadgets. And as you see us around us at Hims now that we're starting to connect the dots between them. And I always like to say that we're going to go from, that we're going now from quantified self where you can, you know, have on five different wearables like I have today, like, you know, a smartwatch, a smart ring, two other ones on my wrist, you've got your version that used to sort of sit silent on our app and that, that's starting to flow into our medical records. So my primary care doc at Stanford is also the CIO. He can now look at my Apple health kit data. But does he? That's the question, because still, it's always about the workflow, stupid, right? No clinician really wants to look at all your steps or sleep or other data. The challenge and the opportunity is to move from all this big data and make it actionable information. So something as simple as like one of a fun toy or actual element. This is a little sleep tracking ring out of Finland called Aura. And what's neat about this is like, you know, it's a bit of a Fitbit on your finger per se, but it's a really highly tuned way of, of tracking your sleep and gives me a, a score and looks at REM and light and deep. Uh, and resting heart rate. Wait, and it's still, okay, it gets, the re it gets the resting heart rate through the ring, but how does it actually get at the sleep? And other, other melons, you know, the Fitbit start to do that now, Apple Watch can do that. Uh, there's sensors under the bed, Apple bought a company called Bedit last year. So sleep, I think we're recognizing that many, at least in America, are underslept, many clinicians are super underslept, right. has a big role to play in both prevention, uh, disease, recovery. Cleaning out all those toxins. Right, and hospitals aren't a great place to get sleep for, for residents or, or clinicians or patients. But um, you know, just an example of something that now could be democratized. And now what's, I think, also interesting in this era of 2018 compared to when we met at maybe future med or now exponential medicine is that we're seeing the big data piece come. That thousands of millions of people wearing sleep devices. So when I look at my data from the Fitbit sleep, it can compare me to others my age and show me what the metrics are, not just my numbers, but where others my age and sex and with, you know, roughly. So we're starting to be able to compare and connect dots there. So that's some of the kind of big picture elements uh, that are happening. And of course, it goes beyond wearables now. We're in the era of, of trainable. So one of my favorite newer companies you know, uh, can give you not just measure data, but give you a nudge. So in our smartphone era today, uh, well, first I'll start with a smartphone era. This is a, an antique. I brought an antique. This is a iPhone 2. It's 10 years old this, this month. Uh, uh, so you think about antiques 10 years ago, this iPhone was amazing, right? And now when I charge it up, it feels slow and clunky and has a low resolution camera, certainly compared to my technology of today. And these are becoming medicalized, obviously, and compared to a decade ago, they're becoming integrated into our healthcare. The fact that now health kit data and EMR data is merging and being tried out at 12 hospitals. But where that pretends is that we can connect not just data, but now what I like to call trainable. So this is a company out of Israel called Upright. Uh, this is their first sensor. Uh, you put it on your back in our smartphone posture era, you know, rough and hunched over, uh, a lot of people with back pain, one of the primary causes, as you know, of primary visits. This will buzz your back when you're kind of hunched over for too long. And in about a week of training, retrains your physiology to sit upright. So it's like Lumo back. A, a version of more, maybe a little more advanced. They have a new one a version that goes, it's smaller and, and, and maybe has higher resolution. Uh, and those are two examples. Lumo back upright of something trying to address the lower back pain area and posture, which has a lot of health and medical issues. So that's kind of a, a nice thing. Um, other feedback you can get are even our smart, um, you know, hearing devices. So this is not so crazy, but this plays music, but also tracks steps and um, heart rate. And now you can have a little virtual coach in there. So another piece that's coming together is the ability to connect the dots between- A mama in your ear. A mama in your ear, a little AI coach, run harder. Uh, <laughs> you can do it or- Eat your vegetables. <laughs> exactly, you slacker. Um, that hopefully knows where you are on the mountain, what your heart rate is, and what your usual times are. And these, by the way, won't just be there for the super athletes, but some of those older, a lot of older folks have hearing aids, and you're seeing the super convergence of a hearing aid with the ability to tell you who you're talking to and where you are and give you cues. Let's say you have early dementia or even advanced. These will become sort of uh, coaches in your ear or beyond. And that idea of coaching 
and making sense of your digital data and beyond to manage diabetes or hypertension or just get in shape are, are getting really interesting. What else you got? I know you have something else. Yeah, what else do I got in my pockets? Um, so, you know, uh, a story that started at actually at, at our early exponential medicine programs, uh, we launched, I helped come up with and launched the Medical Tricorder X Prize, $10 million prize inspired by Star Trek. One of the companies started at our first exponential medicine program called Scanner Do. This is one of the early prototypes. But just the idea that these technologies can come together as not toys, but as tools you can use as a patient at home to pull down your vital signs. This one does temperature, heart rate, O2 sac, calculate your blood pressure, talks to IBM Watson on your smartphone. This hasn't taken all the way to market yet, but it's this idea of you can have a bit of a clinical grade diagnostic in your pocket that can connect to smart information and analytics. And uh, just uh, less than a year ago, this Tricor Express was won, actually by an emergency medicine doctor and his engineering family. And we'll see these sorts of tools, I think, in the pockets of most consumers in the next few years. Your payers may cover them. So that sort of show, showing up in the emergency room at 2 a.m. when you should have been there yesterday, or instead of showing up when you don't need to, you'll have some ways of doing smart triage, both for digital data and as well as laboratories. Um, and uh, where this is riffing further, I'm helped design a new X Prize uh, that's going to launch later this year, early next, uh, a cancer X Prize. So I'm an oncologist. We know that most patients present with late disease, pancreatic, ovarian, lung, etc. Uh, the screening technologies haven't really improved much in decades. So we're launching a, a global cancer X Prize to catalyze teams to solve the problem of rapid, inexpensive, and accurate uh, cancer screening for things like ovarian, pancreas, brain. And we hopefully this will push the ability to pick up cancers early when they're most treatable. And you can go to uh, xprize.com, xprize.org slash cancer to sign up to join the competition and, and support that. So that's an example of leveraging exponential technologies like the medical tricorder did with new imagination and new people to come, come together and solve problems. Um, uh, what else do I have in my pocket? Uh, oh, yeah, I always have with me uh, mini me. There he is. He's smaller and better looking. This is actually already a couple years old. This idea, you know, 3D printing, personalization. Uh, 3D printing is coming to healthcare. Everything the ability to print a ring, print a cast for your orthopedic injury, print uh, a hip or knee implant. Digital manufacturing of 3D printing is coming in all sorts of exciting ways. And one of them would be, you know, this is a ratchet printed on the space station. This one, actual one wasn't, but one of our Singularity University startups called Made in Space designed and flew the first 3D printer, went to the space station. Uh, one of the early things they printed was a functional ratchet. And just last year, they printed the first medical devices, like a little splint for an astronaut might have broken a pinky. Uh, bouncing around in microgravity. Um, so the idea that you can now democratize and print on demand certain medical things is going to be quite powerful, not just in the first world OR, but in the developing world. Uh, in Haiti, after the uh, earthquake and beyond, they, they were using uh, uh, 3D printers, pretty low-cost low ones, to, to make pretty important things. So 3D printing is interesting, um, all the way to th printing pharmaceuticals, all the way to the idea of printing organs. And one idea that on this convergence of technologies, most of your viewers have heard of CRISPR, you know, new gene engineering. People ask me, when are we going to 3D print an organ? And my background is stem cell biology and regenerative medicine. Well, I think we're not going to need to 3D print a, a very complex heart or liver or kidney. Uh, we're going to start, and this has already started, genetically modifying human-sized pigs, knocking out some of the pig genes for some of the gl uh, glycogen things on the surface, and knocking in human, like HLA, human immune markers, and humanizing these pigs. So you'll, you'll get an organ transplant from a humanized pig. And I always like to joke, it may not be kosher, but if you need that organ and you're on the wait list, you'll, you might take it. So that's another kind of blend of this convergence of technologies. Last, well, a couple other things in my pocket that I think are this example of convergence. I have an, another antique. You guys remember the, uh, oops, sorry, the, the, the Google Glass. This is now four or five years old. And this is an early example of augmented reality, or blended or mixed reality, which this wasn't a big hit on the consumer side, but clearly has been useful in the operating room. Companies like Augmetics taking it for scribing. Uh, I think a very exciting era now is AR and VR uh, in very advanced ways for training medical students to learn anatomy, for, for you know, surgeons to practice procedures in a virtual environment, uh, to do medical education. Stanford has the virtual heart. You can walk through a heart with trilogy of Fallot. So lots of new ways we're going to change how we do medical education and bring that information to the consumer, the patient, for both engagement and real-time training. Whew. Well. <laughs> Stop for a beat. Um, you have just a couple more you want to show me, and oh, then we'll. We talked about 3D printing. Uh, my friend Stephen Keating even 3D printed his own brain tumor to help educate and help his brain surgeons take it out. And this idea of an engaged, empowered patient who can print his own tumor and help the surgeons is part of this future. He likes to talk about us all becoming, you know, uh, having a share button in the hospital EMR so we can share our data. One of the big issues 
here with interoperability and all these data silos is that you can't even get access to your own medical information and data easily. How can we streamline that process? So from 3D printing to data to hopefully making intelligent more real-time and, and proactive. And so part of what I see now when I talk to clinician groups, payers, pharma, consumers, is that there's a lot out there, but it's hard to sift through it. And there's a lot of tools from you know, the Alive Core device that you can now, I was, I was on a, flying across the country, saw an ad on television for Alive Core device. I thought, that's interesting. Like, you know, it's on TV now. But I still meet cardiologists who never heard of that device or never even use a connected blood pressure cuff. Or a triathlete might use a wearable device, but what if you could use one for someone recovering from tra traumatic brain injury? Or I met some companies here using, you know, brain computer interfaces. Here's one for prescribing meditation and mindfulness. This is the uh, Muse, interacts on Muse. So, um, I'm about to launch in the next few months a new website, digital.health. You know, it's a new .health domain, and where you can go to digital.health and find the devices, apps, digiceuticals, platforms that would be right for your patients. Whether you're trying to manage prediabetes or have a patient with mental health issues, you can help them with an app like Headspace or a brain computer interface, all the way to uh, next generation software and AI to help let people find and prescribe these technologies that are often here and catalyze new thinking. I think you just created a, a brand new profession within the house of medicine, and that could be the digital device consultant. Maybe, but, you know, I like to think about this will be a digital health or whatever you want to call it, digital health connected mobile pharmacopoeia. Just like when we went to medical school, we have our list of different right, drugs for, right. treating, for treating the UTI. Here's the set of digital tools com combined sometimes with devices in pharma that we can use and then hopefully connect those dots to speed up clinical trials and get folks engaged. And as the incentive shift to, value-based care and the workflow integrates with this, we can have an era where I'll literally be able to prescribe a connected scale blood pressure cuff device app and be rewarded for that. And that data can flow and help inform the system. So Daniel, what can I say? That was, uh, that was a whirlwind and it was wonderful. <laughs> and, um, you got something else you're gonna show us? Do one little plug, which is that, you know, for the innovators out there, a lot's happening. It's hard to get a pulse we often go to very siloed conferences, pharma companies, oncology, and, and what we've done at Singularity University and with my Exponential Medicine Conference is hopefully blend a lot of these fields and let people sort of see where that puck is going. So if you're looking for some great talks and resources online, go to exponentialmedicine.com and maybe join us this November 4th through 7th. I hope you come back. Yeah, well, I can highly recommend it because I told you the first time I went, I fell in love with it. And the last time I was there, it was also fantastic and it keeps getting better and better. So I really want to thank you for joining us, Daniel, and for sharing all of those gadgets with us. And I know that makes it sound like I'm not thinking of them as important medical devices, but I do think of them as important medical devices. And as a matter of fact, have some that I use on a daily basis myself. So I want to thank you and um, wish you luck in your talk here. Great. Thanks for having me. And um, thanks to what the work you do and your colleagues. And I think it's kind of these kind of forums which bring people together and catalyze new thinking so that we can all create the future of healthcare together. <laughs>